Fortunately, um, the fifth vent just opened up, and so we get more inundation. Um, this is looks like on one of the main roads, the Pohiki Road, is Please now go. inundated. So um, you know, the activity continues. Um, doesn't look like it's slowing down. Everything's still escalated as far as seismicity and deflation. So you know, the, the county and the government just continues to respond and and try to be aware. Uh, we've got a a uh, community meeting planned tonight at 5.30 in Pahoa. Try to address the, the community's concerns and let them know what we've been doing, that we're still working out there for them and um, see what we can do for them. Uh, the, a lot of quakes been going on and people are on edge. What's your message to those people? Well, you know, uh, that's part of being on an active volcano, unfortunately. Fortunately, nothing came of it, you know, as far as um, we had a few landslides that were dealing with that. There was some some coastal water movement, but nothing major, no, no, you know, impacts to the water and got uh, lucky there. So, um, so, um, but yeah, two big, two earthquakes like that, that's kind of unusual here. Um, you know, around the volcano, like the folks down in Leilani, they were feeling not quite constant, but pretty frequent earthquakes, but not of that magnitude, you know. I think uh, maybe threes and below, but that kind of wears on your nerves as well, I think. But these two big ones that we just had, it kind of gets you nervous as well. What one kind of the things of, uh, regarding the Hawaii Volcanoes Observatory, though, uh, when is, you've got a briefing that's going to be coming up, and uh, what's the latest that you've heard from them? If, is there anything new on what kind of activity we can expect? I haven't talked to them uh, extensively today, besides this morning. But as I said earlier, everything is still elevated, and um, it, it doesn't look like anything much has changed. So we can pretty much expect the same kind of activity that's been going on, you know, since the last 24 hours. Talmadge, uh, how many? Do you have an update on how many homes have been surrounded by the lava or destroyed? Any injury? Uh, we've got two structures. One was a house. I'm not sure what the other structure was. And I think there was one medical related, maybe a, a cardiac type incident. But, uh, you know, fortunately with the high gas uh, levels that we've had, there's been no other um, incidents related to that. Pretty fortunate because the gases have been very high. What so about any damage or injuries from the earthquake? Yeah. The earthquake, well, we had, I think, combined maybe about either four or five landslides on the Hamakua coastline. Um, public works and state highways were dealing, opening those. And, um, you know, I, th I think one of them at least shut down two lanes. But it uh, didn't sound like it was going to be anything more extensive than that. I know some buildings had some minor damage. I heard it throughout Hilo Town, but pretty much that was it. And no injuries. Not that we know of. Yes. Well, tonight's community meeting as well is going to be kind of similar to what we saw during the uh, 2014 Pahoa lava, where you know you'll be able to answer questions along with the different agencies. Uh, I guess somewhat. You know, we'll be there. Uh, we'll we'll present what the government's been doing um, and what uh, we expect to do, and then give the community an opportunity to meet us, basically, and see who we are that that are trying to take care of them, and then. Uh, an opportunity to ask questions. And as far as the areas that are still evacuated, it's just the same in addition to the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, no other subdivision? Yes, yeah, still um, Leilani and Lanapuni, uh, Lanapuni Gardens. Um, you know, that footprint has kind of expanded. You know, initially it was just, you know, limited to maybe partial roadway, part, maybe half of the, the Leilani, but then now, then you know, by late yesterday, extended to the whole subdivision. And now, you know, because of the gas levels, we even had to close Highway 130 that um, runs adjacent to Leilani Estates um, just because of the gas levels. The roadway was still okay at that time. But like I said earlier, uh, Pohiki Road, which is one of the main, well, one of the two-lane roads that leads to the coastline and, one, and the boat ramp on that side is now inundated.
And you were actually, you were chief ranger, right? Yes. At Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Yes. Uh, just your reaction to seeing what's going on. Have, have you seen anything like this before? No, this, this is definitely a first. I've never, you know, been around activity, uh, uh, an intrusion. I've been around numerous intrusions, but never one that's been this far from the source. Um, and it's yeah, quite different from what I've experienced before in the park. Because it's so far away. Yes, uh, just, just a really extensive uh, intrusion. Uh, the previous ones I was involved with were in the upper east rift zone. We're, now we're down in the lower east rift zone. You know, it's way miles away from that region. Are all four uh, fissures still active and has there been any significant movement of lava from those locations? We, we, we say that they're active. You know, they might be just steaming or bubbling, but uh, I consider them active. And any movement of lava from those locations? Not to any point that's significant. It seems like, you know, they pop out, they, they stay active for a, a short period, then they'll kind of wane and then an, another one will start up. You mentioned the fifth one on Pohoiki Road. Is that in Leilani Estates still? It's, I believe so. It's kind of like right on the entrance of Leilani Estates. Yeah. Okay, we'd like to bring in Mayor Harry Kim. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you, Talmadge. Thank you. Thank you for that. Civil Defense Administrator. So, Mary, uh, Mayor Kim, uh, uh, any major changes? What's the update in the me any update in the message that you have for residents here on the Big Island? No, but you know what we're going to run is a different phase of evacuees. I think today, by tonight we should have maybe even close to 200, at least 150. Uh, we've decided uh, this morning that we're going to feed these people instead of the standard uh, shelter bring your own provisions. I mean, all of these uh, evacuees have enough to worry about without thinking about where to get food and cook and all those things. Uh, uh, the county will provide with Red Cross uh, meals for these uh, evacuees. How long uh, do you expect to, to be able to provide meals? Because it sounds like more people are looking for shelter and, and uh, going to Pohoa. There's 200 there already are signed up. As long as we need to. Mayor. A lot of people are on edge. Those two major oh. earthquakes, uh, where were you when that happened? And should people be um, taking down their plates from their shelves? Should they be preparing in case another one happens? You know, all your Honolulu people. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it great that we just write it out? I mean, just think of it. You know, you have two earthquakes in a short time, 5-4, five, 5-3, five, and 6-9. You have four or five fissures of lava open up and multiple tremors in the past week or so. And you know, people, uh, I'm not trying to be callous about it, but this is something that is Hawaii, maybe not that close and that often. Uh, as far as taking things up to shop, this is something they should do all the time, uh, what to do and what not to do in normal circumstances. Stores have learned that. You know, you have to put barriers or so glasses and those things they if you look at the supermarkets now uh, they don't put the heavy things at the top shelf anymore if you look at the big box stores same thing you know they have reinforced those racks so uh, I think we're better you know we're learning and we get better and soon as an area that has weathered so many different events uh, from the tropical storm cell and uh, mm. other lava intrusions that have occurred. Uh, we talked earlier about 1983, 1955, 1960 in Kapoho. So people in this area are a bit more resilient and have more knowledge and hopefully knock on wood are more prepared for this sort of thing. You know, every time I see something on the mainland, let's say a flood, you know, some things, and you wonder, why do people live there, right? Continuous. I'm from Pune, so I'm not going to be a hypocrite. That's my home. I love uh, the uh, Pune. Uh, there's no place to me more beautiful than Pune as far as vegetation and the ocean. And we know the, uh, the hazards and the risk. And you try to minimize it by insurance and how you build and what you build. Uh, but, you know, Pune, if you look at the Southeast Rift Zone, uh, a, a big portion of that has been inundated by all the huge mentioned continuous lava flow since 1983. You know, Royal Gardens, Kalapana Gardens, and Kaimu, and all those places. And this is just a continuation of that, and not to make light of anything. This is something people who do buy there and live there, they have to accept that that's the risk of that area.
Can you explain what's different between either preparations or how you folks are tackling the situation between 1983 as well as four years ago? I realize four years ago you were retired, um, but as far as now compared to then? First, uh, I was retired later than that. Don't ask me why I came back. <laughs> <laughs> Not too smart, I guess. But now, uh, each one we learn, truthfully. Each one we hopefully will get better and the uh, public uh, will be more responsive to the public needs. Uh, we'll never know it all. You know, we'll always have to get better. And we will. Talmadge uh, spoke about how this was different than events he experienced in his time when he was working for the National Park. How can you compare this to events that you've experienced in your time here, both as Civil Defense Administrator and as Mayor? You know what the truth is? I know what Talmadge's job was. You know why it's diff uh, worse or whatever, he said? because his job is different. He's now responsible for a whole lot more than a small portion of the island through National Park. National Park, you don't deal with hundreds or thousands of civilians. We talked about that. So your whole mentality, you might think the situation is different. The hazards and the risks are the same. It's just his job is different. What's your message to people who want to, a lot of people want to go back to their homes and get things because they have maybe forgot something at home and they want to go back home? Uh, we're going to allow them. You know, uh, we talked about what our policies will be. Yes, there's a mandatory evacuation, meaning people should know this is at high risk of uh, destruction. But we have set a policy that we're going to try to help each and every one individually that we, <coughs> excuse me, that we can to allow them to even stay, you know, if it's safe enough. Uh, so that's not going to be a problem. Is that going to be one of the things that you can, you'll be able to outline tonight or have outlined tonight at the community meeting? Yeah, we will talk to them about how we can do this. All of us have got to remember this is a tragedy on them, and we've got to work with them to how, to, how we can minimize it as best as possible. All right. All right. Thank you so Mayor much, Kim. Mayor Kim, and uh, that's the latest from the Emergency Operations Center.